Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about a subscriber question. And the question in question was, Frederick, what libraries should I, or frameworks as well, as well, of course, should I learn alongside React and Redux just to prepare for a shift in trends? So let's get into it. Well, that question is a damn dangerous one. And the reason why it's a dangerous question is because that entire question is based around the idea that you should learn something that is up and coming just in case. And that mindset, guys, is the entire reason why these, these people exist who will create a lot of legacy in a lot of projects, especially in Fronten, which is the scope of this of this question. Now, let just let me explain here. You see, when you have the mindset that you are going to look ahead and you're going to predict what is going to be the next best thing, then you are not evaluating your current state. In other words, you are opting in to a solution that has no problem. And that is something that is very, very dangerous. It is the same damn thing as premature optimization. It's the same damn thing as creating abstractions before you actually need them. And the issue here is that I see this quite a lot and it becomes almost a self-fulfilling prophecy because people will start up into things that they may not actually need and then the train of so, like a hype train of some sort gets going and the thing kind of snowballs on you and this is like this is basically consumerism it's the same thing with the, like the fashion industry does the same damn thing i mean it's it's about getting people excited about something and that is the thing that people with a vested interest in your tools and what tools you actually pick are going to try to exploit. And that's exactly why you have all these groups lobbying for different frameworks and how you know it's going to be the next best thing. I mean, they are trying to push their framework. And if you are inexperienced and you make the wrong call here, you are going to fuck up your project. Well, not to the point where it can't be saved, of course, but you're most likely going to shoot yourself quite quite a bit in the foot. <clears throat> An example of this is where, well, one of my favorite discussion is when I talk to people who think that they understand GraphQL. And what's interesting is that they very, in a very safe and secure manner, they state that your GraphQL is gonna be the next best thing. It's the thing that you're gonna bet everything on and it's gonna be used for everything. No, it is not. Not even the big companies use GraphQL for everything. And that's the thing that I try to explain to people when I'm saying that if you understand the use case, then you understand when to use it and when not to use it. It's the same thing for most tools. And that's the issue with predicting something. To predict what is going to happen next is very, very much dependent on your ability to understand how these trends work what problems that you have in the industry today and what solutions are up and coming or are right now being developed that have the potential to solve those issues. Because there are certain tools that will become popular even though they may not be something that you need to opt into. Because remember, you don't have the time to learn everything. I can promise you, you cannot learn it all. And if you can't learn it all, then it makes then it makes sense to focus on one, the things that make you excited, the things that you are interested in, and two, the things that are actually going to me be relevant for work ex for work purposes. And when it comes to the React ecosystem, it is a fairly established ecosystem today. The main tools uh, when it comes to React and oh, just in general is React, Redux and React Router. Those are the three like really, really big ones. And then you have com complements to these. Uh, there's a ton of libraries that either do the same, th do similar things at these libraries, or they have some other functionality. I mean, there are, take Storybook, for example. I mean, you don't have to have Storybook in every project, but the three that I just mentioned are extremely common. Redux is also, you know, there's a few variations of Redux, but it is still, the most popular version of it to do state management and action dispatching and all that good stuff. So those are the three main ones. So when it comes to asking the question, okay, what's going to come up next? What should I learn alongside with it? Well, 
that very much depends as i said there these are the three core ones these are the, the three things that are going to matter when you apply for a job because the smaller libraries will differ from project to project sometimes you will find a project that has storybook sometimes it's not going to have storybook sometimes you will be in a project where they have all these obscure little libraries that handle everything from promise resolution in like uh, redux pack is one small such library that i have used at my project but i didn't use it at the last project so the, when it comes to like trying to predict what the next thing is going to be or what you should learn alongside with react the the thing that I'm trying to get you to focus on here is to learn the big things because those are the things that you can kind of bet on. But when it comes to the smaller things, it's very tricky to say what's going to be just a universally true and universally good thing to invest in. And that is why I argue that what's more important is to learn the big tools that make a big difference in your, you know, your opportunities out there in the workforce the things that are going to be on a cv because that's something that a lot of beginners don't actually understand when you as an example if you fill out your cv with every library that you know that's not going to help you much it's just going to be a lot of white like a bunch of noise because although you may think so most recruiters and most companies they don't know they don't know every single tiny little library. They don't care about every single tiny little library because you can learn these tiny little libraries in a matter of hours or say a day or two. It takes no time, very little time to understand that. And it differs, as I said, from almost every project. However, they usually focus on the big things. In other words, people don't really care if you learn, if you know some very very small part of one of your depend like one small dependency of your project they care if you about knowing the big stuff like the actual frameworks because that's the thing that structures the whole way of working and that's the environment that you need to kind of figure out but if i am to give you some type of guidance when it comes to what should you learn alongside react and redux i would say that it has less to do with react and redux and react router and so forth because these three are as i said i mean the, the, these are the things that you should be focusing on apart from that it is vital for you to understand things such as the webpack and like these sorts of things that's probably the biggest one webpack is going to be where it's very likely that it's going to be a big part of your development stack other tools that may be very relevant for you depending on your project is going to be gulp or grunt these sorts of build tools and then you have the different loaders like uh, you have tons and tons and tons of loaders when it comes to webpack just that in and of itself is a short challenge to actually get good at but when it if we are going to stick to the react ecosystem there isn't really all that much more i would argue that you really need to focus on and some people will tell me about oh server-side rendering react and i kind of go yeah you can absolutely focus on that as well but it's not every product that uses it even because the f fact of the matter is that not every project wants to i mean not every product is using node on the server and not every project wants to go through the hassle of trying to figure out how to actually do server-side rendered react on whatever server-side language they're using. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to asking the question, what should I learn in order to stay ahead of the curve? I don't think that you should have that mindset because the thing is there is, although you may find all these people on the internet and Go is still probably right now the biggest culprit in, in promising things that haven't happened yet. Same thing, oh, and WebAssembly is pretty much there, up there as well. These things have not come to pass yet, guys, and we are not seeing a trend that indicates that this is going to be this world-changing. I mean, every people, a person who tries to sell or promote a tool or a language, guys, will sell you the idea as if this is changing the world and it's all, all but already decided. I mean, even a progressive web application and this idea has been sold in as it's just everybody does it when it's actually not everybody who does it. It's just a portion of people, a small portion who do it but you have to sell it that way because that's the way you get other people to get excited about it so if you want to be you know level-headed about this i urge you to wait until there are strong indications that things are changing and you actually see that there are actually job requirements who are more and more popping up around this specific topic and then you can start thinking about okay what can i start focusing on because my guess is that if you want to be really good at software development you're gonna be quite busy just learning and getting good at the stuff that is relevant today have a great day